Bernard Henry Kroger was born in Cincinnati in 1860, the fifth of ten children of German immigrants John and Mary Kroger. Although his father owned a dry goods store, it's said that it was his frugal and disciplined mother who developed Barney's keen business sense. Barney's childhood was a short one. The failure of the family business forced him to quit school and go to work, first as a drugstore clerk, then as a hired hand on a farm. He soon decided to return to Cincinnati, where he found a job as a door-to-door -door salesman for the Great Northern and Pacific Tea Company. His drive and strong work ethic propelled him through the ranks, from street peddler to wagon delivery man, and then to other tea companies. At the Imperial Tea Company, he accepted the position of manager and turned the struggling company around to show a profit. When Barney proposed partnership, the owners turned him down. So Barney, at age 23, decided it was time to open his own business. In 1883, Barney, along with his friend B.A. Brannigan, started the Great Western Tea Company. Two disasters almost ruined them their first year. First, Brannigan unsuccessfully tried to beat a train at a crossing. The horse was killed, the company's only delivery wagon destroyed, and the dry goods were carried into the next county on the cowcatcher. The second disaster was the 1884 Ohio River flood, which wiped out almost all of their inventory. Kroger managed to persevere, and by the end of the year, he eked out a small profit of $2,620 and bought out his partner, renaming the store B.H. Kroger's Tea and Grocery Stores. 90% of the earnings were reinvested in the business, and Kroger concentrated on building strong clientele through quality, service, advertising, and low prices. By applying these principles aggressively, Barney was able to expand his enterprise into a chain of stores. In 1902, when the company had a total of 30 stores, it was incorporated as the Kroger Grocery and Baking Company. Soon, Kroger's were in many Midwest cities. Kroger's had a number of grocery chain firsts, such as operating its own bakery, butcher shop, and closing early at 7 p.m. out of respect for the clerk's home life. Such innovations had a price. When Kroger bakeries began turning out two and a half cent loaves of bread, competition declared war on him for selling at such a low price. Barney even received death threats. He evaded the threat of financial death during the stock market crash in 1929 because just one year earlier, he sold his stock to the investment firm of Lehman Brothers in New York City for $15,625,000. He remained a director of the company until 1931, which had grown to over 5,000 stores bearing his name. Later in life, B.H. Kroger became involved in other businesses, philanthropies, and politics. In 1900, he helped found the Provident Bank, where he served as chairman of the board. He also was a director of the First National Bank of Palm Beach, where he lived part of the year. His charitable contributions were many. Barney served as president of the Cincinnati Society for the Welfare of the Blind. He was also a dynamic speaker during fundraising campaigns for the Community Chest, Red Cross, and the YMCA. Kroger donated the ground and buildings for two Kroger Hill camps for anemic inner-city children. He also donated funds to open parks and recreation areas that had closed and bought a day at Coney Island for 5,000 children. Politically, Kroger was involved both nationally as a Republican and locally as one of the founding members of the Charter Movement. During World War I, he served at the request of President Wilson on the National Food Board and as a food expert on the Ohio Defense Council. As head of the Businessmen's Club in Cincinnati, Kroger was endorsed once for Governor of Ohio by the Hamilton County delegation to the state's Republican convention. When Barney died in 1938, many Cincinnatians mourned. Kroger's popularity can be attributed to his incredible rags-to-riches story and the fact that he liberally shared his success with his family, employees, and the city he helped make. He certainly left his mark on Cincinnati and his innovations helped shape today's business practices.